What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new live episode of the Hot Mic here on the Outlaw Nation. I'm one half of the Hot Mic. I am the Outlaw John Roca, joined as always by the better half over there, lounging in the sun. Jeff Snyder, how are you? Uh, just dandy, John. Good to be here. <laughs> as if the mic isn't already hot enough, the SOB is out there in the hottest part of the day getting all stoked up. So he's all ready to get it on. We're going to talk about so many things happening here in the world of entertainment that's fit to print, not fit to print, uh, and have some fun with it. Last week was a blazing hot show. We'll see if we match that level of fire this week. We shall see. But make sure you send in your stream labs and your super chats now. You saw last week we ran over a little bit. We were lucky. Jeff had enough time to answer everything. So get them in now so we can start answering the questions as soon as possible in the show. And the way the show works is Jeff and I come up with a pretty much of a rough rundown, and then we start throwing topics out to each other, uh, uh, taking turns on that, and then responding to them and talking about them. So, Jeff, uh, I'd like to start first. We I know we're picking up right where we left off last week, it feels like, but we've got even more drama going on this week with DC, with Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, news that uh, um, Ezra Miller has been arrested in Vermont again for a felony burglary charge. I mean, look, I get it. We all stole alcohol in our growing up. I mean, that's, you know, it's, but you throw that on top of the shit pile that's already been happening around this, around Ezra Miller. Uh, and a Hollywood reporter wrote an article talking about the three ways out and the rumors they're hearing. And from their sources, for the first time ever, we're hearing credible, I would say credible, uh, rumors that Flash is now on the table to possibly be axed by Warner Brothers Discovery. I know you've been adamant that it's not going to happen. Nobody cares about Ezra. But are we hitting on the hot mic a boiling point here for Ezra and the and the Flash movie? I mean, it's the situation's not getting any better, John. But at the same <laughs> time, I will remain adamant. It is insanity to think that this movie is going to do anything besides hit theaters. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, you don't not release a 200 million dollar movie because the star stole some bottles of booze well no no it's not one issue it's multiple issues because now the vermont child protective service agencies is looking for this mother and her three daughters who are supposedly hiding out on this where on his house in vermont that's so, like, crazy wow there's more what to does that have to do with ezra miller I'm saying, well, because it was Ezra Miller's house. He was keeping them there. What are you talking about? He's keeping them? Yes. What, what, what is he, barricade? He has them chained to the radiator? Look, there were rumors that I he's running a cult. Yeah. Vermont can't find a woman and her children, and this is Ezra Miller's problem? Yes, because he they were on his ranch. The rumor was he was hiding them out Maybe at they his left. house. Maybe they left. I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. You know, you I, should work for studio publicity. This is fantastic what you're doing. I, I just, What's this I just, got to do I, with I Ezra? I don't understand, like, what, like, the, the, the flash has to come down with whether Vermont authorities can find a, a mother and her three children. <sighs> That's not like, what I'm saying. I'm saying any, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, it throws, uh, it's another thing to throw on the pile. I mean, there was the choking incident. There is, the, we've heard, we, I don't want to detail them. We've talked about them. If you don't know by now, you can Google it and see all the multiple incidents involving Ezra Miller. So this is yet another thing, another headache. And the, the Hollywood Reporter's article also stated that the mom is now involved, that she is apparently around Ezra, his mom, or her, uh, their mom, and is supposedly creating the possibility of uh, getting them therapy and starting an apology tour. Sure, because the they, they, they see the end of the gravy train coming up, you know, fast approaching. Yeah. They're like, geez, my, my kid's not going to have a career yeah. if they keep up this behavior. Uh, and so I got to get involved to, to basically save my own future. <laughs> yeah, because there's two, two franchises that were in play here with the Harry Potter franchise and and uh, DC with Flash and all of that. So, uh, but I mean, but let's 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 pull it all the way back. Like, if you are vetting the future of your franchise, and there have been issues with Ezra Miller in the past, why would you hand him the? Why would you make him the linchpin of this supposed reset 
that is happening here. With I don't know DC. where you're getting some of this stuff, John. He's not the lynch. They are not the linchpin of this reset. The they, Flash movie is the linchpin of the reset. No, it's not. What? what do you mean? The, the, the Flash movie's been in the can. The reset was announced last week. How could it be the linchpin of the reset? But yeah, but he's been in charge since April. And remember what Zaslow well, said. Zaslow said it was done way before April too. I, I know, the reshoot. Sure. But Ezra came back for reshoots. That's what they announced a couple of weeks ago that Ezra came back to do some reshoots. It was revealed. And remember what Zaslov said last week. He said, we've seen all these movies already. We think we can make them better. So clearly they he thought also Ezra- They were fantastic. What's that? He also said that they were fantastic. Yeah, but he said he could make them better. Okay, well, that's what a reshoot does. Yes. But why would you do more reshoots with a guy who you know is trouble? What are you supposed to do? Not do the reshoots because this guy's trouble, so we're not going to make the movie the best that it can be? I say you create another scene, create another storyline, something where he's not involved or they're not involved, so you could do something else. It just doesn't make sense. Dude, I told you, it's going to be one movie and that's it. So the, he's not the future of the franchise. He's the star of a movie that's already been shot. <laughs> right. But what I'm trying to say, and let me clarify this. It's not that they were going to reset Zaslav's plan with the movie. The movie was supposed to apparently correct everything that had gone on that was dis all the disparate elements of the DC universe under Zack Snyder, under Hamada and other people. And it was going to line everything up after this, after the Flash movie. Okay, we're now all connected. It, not all the movies connected, but the, connect, the movies that are supposed to be connected are connected now. Well, like, we've explained everything. And, you know, remember what said in the Batgirl, um, the two directors said that they were told, well, why is Michael Keaton in this film with, Zack Snyder's Jim Gordon, and they were like, we're going to figure out. We got a plan. We got a plan. Flash, well, the Flash may be the linchpin of Hamada's plan. The question yeah. is whether Hamada will be around to enact that plan. Right. Whether that plan is one and the same, you know, that, that David Zaslav has up his league. I mean, listen, this guy, let's just face it, this guy doesn't have any fucking plans. He just Ooh, said, let's just have, we're going to have a 10 year plan that's like Marvel. Yeah. I mean, a anyone coming in off the street could say those words. Yeah. That's a fair point. And, and you know, the new, there was another follow-up article from DC, uh, from Hollywood Reporter today as well, talking about whether DC is in, is in chaos, the universe is in chaos because of the issues that were going on was, with Hamada and Zaslav. Apparently, Zaslav, from the article, it seems like Zaslav made no effort to keep Hamada, to keep him in the loop, to no. have any conversations with him about Batgirl, which is why he wanted to leave. And it was two of the people that had talked him into staying to keep going with this universe. And they want to, in essence, take over and be the uh, triumvirate that takes over and essentially be the Feige for the DC universe. Do you think that is ridiculous? you think that's done? I told you last week, I think Walter Hamad has been doing a perfectly fine job. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I just don't understand who they think that they're going to bring in, you know, to, to do a better job than what he's done. Mm. Um, well, I realize that they want their fight. And listen, this is probably going to happen. I don't really know that it's it's tenable at this point to move forward yeah. with Walter Hamada, um, you know, who's kind of just kind of been like emasculated, yes, <laughs> uh, publicly the last few weeks. Yeah. So David is going to likely get his way and bring in his person. Is it is it going to be and should it be Greg Berlanti? No, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, disagree with that. Just because you can put together a, 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 some master plan doesn't mean that's a good master plan. Yeah, I haven't yeah. watched any of these CW shows, not a single one. Yeah. yeah. So why would you hire this guy? Yeah. That, that's listen. Keep that gravy train going on on the TV stuff. Yeah, he, yeah. You know that audience. It's not going to follow. Just, he's not the guy. So yeah. like, well, like we said last week, whether it's Thomas Tull. I mean, even the people at Sony. Why not go get Matt Tolmac? Why no? Why not go get uh, Palak Patel? Okay, it's a good question. Do you think these people want to walk into a dysfunctional franchise like this and take and be a part of it? I don't know if they necessarily want to do that. What makes it a dysfunctional <laughs> franchise? Because Ezra Miller's been arrested a bunch. I don't. No, there's more. It's it's that they're look. We shelved Batgirl. Okay, we reshoot. We reshot Aquaman two scenes with the with the michael keaton batman we replaced it with the ben affleck batman okay and now we've got a flash movie that's in peril 
and, and we don't know if we're going to drop it. We're going to put it out or not. Dude, it's coming out. Don't listen to any of these trade reports. It's all bullshit. All right. This is an ed- – can you feel it, John? Can't you read this stuff and feel the editor breathing down the necks of these reporters? Say, you got to give me something. Give me something on the situation. But there's nothing there because there haven't been any fucking decisions. Nor do any decisions need to be made because it's not coming out for a long time, The Flash. Is it coming exactly. out this year? No. no next year. There's, there's plenty of time for the public to forget about Ezra Miller stealing some bottles of booze in Vermont. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but we're a current show, so we got to talk about current all, things. Aquaman, so. right? Yeah. Stuff, like, stuff like Aquaman. Aquaman, they're changing the cameo, right? They're going from yeah. Keaton to Affleck. Yeah. But what happens if Aquaman gets pushed back even further? Maybe they have. Know. Maybe have to flip that again and bring back the Keaton cameo. Oh, Jesus! Because by then it'll make sense. Well, if they <clears throat> if we if they cancel the Batgirl, well, they cancel the Batgirl, right? And they replaced him with Ben Affleck and Aquaman too. If they cancel the Flash, this nostalgia trip with Michael Keaton absolutely goes away. We're never seeing Michael Keaton again wearing the Batman cowl, only in pictures. That would be insane, and I wonder what the uproar would be amongst the fans. Like, but like, people don't even know what they're missing. Most people, you and I know, right? right but right. like, the general audiences out there today, what are they? It's like that's the past, anyway. So, right, who cares? I, I think Zaslav's in a tough spot because he wants to reset it all. Right? He's he just does like, burn it all to the ground, reboot it. Yeah, uh, but but keep Joker and Batman separate, like I right. told you. Like I told you last week. You should the do that. Problem, the problem is you can't restart it completely because things like Aquaman are working. But isn't that the problem with every every <clears throat> regime that has come into DC? That's the problem. Oh, this one film worked, so we should definitely keep that going. Oh, this film worked because we should definitely keep that going. Fuck that nonsense. Burn it to the ground. If you're going to burn it to the ground, recast all over again. Say we're just going to start rebuild, go into a rebuilding year and put everybody in place. There are actors and actresses who would kill at the shot at playing these DC characters. So what do you think? So start of? over. You yeah, think uh, let, let Momoa go. Let Gal Gadot go. Let them all go. Start all over again. what about again. Batman and Joker? What about huh? Batman and Joker? Well, they're not connected to the overall main universe. You're right. You're right. Okay. but would So you, let them hang out and do whatever. Okay, so you wouldn't end those completely and just say, No, no, those because because those are separate and they're not connected to your main timeline. So for me, if you're going to reboot, if I was David Zaslav, I'd be like, look, here's the deal. We're going to take some financial hits initially, but in the long run, we are going to make 10, 20, 30 times what we're paying out right now. Trust me on this. Let's start all over again. Let's come up with a vision. Where are we going? The problem is he can't do that because he doesn't have his Feige. And it's not going to be DeLuca and Abdi and ha- Hamada. I agree with you. There's, he's he's not gonna, huh? you know, people aren't buying tickets to see Kevin Feige. No, no. You, my, you're out of your fucking my, mind. You think people aren't buying tickets to see Kevin Feige. His name is as synonymous with Marvel's success as anything, bro. People go because they trust Marvel. Marvel, in essence, is Feige. That is the same brand recognition when it comes to the movies and the TV shows. It's the same level of brand recognition. Come on, dude. It's Kevin Feige's a celebrity to us. Okay. <laughs> he, so he, 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 no, John, he could deliver a pizza to my dad tonight. You think my dad's going to recognize him? Stop going through everything your dad. It's not the Bill Simmons show. I don't need to know what your 80 year old dad would recognize or not recognize. Your, your dad doesn't even pay for tickets to movies anymore. He is you not think, your barometer. If I called my 10 high school buddies right now, yeah, we're all 38. Yeah. How yeah. many of them you think if Kevin Feige delivered a pizza to their house tonight, they'd right. say, Jeff, Kevin Feige showed up at my house tonight with pizza? I bet you maybe, maybe one or two of those guys would say that. Fair enough. If you called them up and said, Kevin Feige is delivering a pizza to your house, I bet you all 10 of them wouldn't say, who the hell is Kevin Feige? That's the difference. Actors put butts in seats, John. IP characters put butts in seats. The name of the producer does yeah. not put a butt in a seat. Okay. If they release Avengers 5 and you look at the poster and you're investigating the credits and yeah. it says produced by Avi Arad instead of Kevin Feige, you're not yeah. going to be like, oh, I'm not going to this. Right, right. But I'm saying, I, I, I'm saying Zaslav has said he wants a Feige in place. And until he puts that Feige in place, he's not going to be able to go forward and b- with burning it all down and starting all over. That's what I'm getting at. So either he's got to make the – I think he's going to let these films play out 
Aquaman 2, Black Adam, Shazam, and possibly Flash. But then he's got to switch out. Why did you hire Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi if you're then waiting for your magic Kevin Feige? Did like, he hire Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi? Yes. They came over with him. Well, then why the, the, the article makes it seem as if they're in with Hamada and they're all kind of like trying to make it that they're the triumvirate that will go forward and be, in essence, in place of the Kevin Feige and deciding the direction of DC the is going to have its own head, right? But I, I don't think yeah. it all comes down to who is this head going to be because at the end of it, two thirds of the triumvirate are already in place. Yeah, that's true. I that's just true. don't like I, people. I don't know, man. People put so much stock in these executive hires, like because it worked. It worked for Feige. I mean, you know, they, they've been successful. So that's why. Well, let's let's hit some of these Streamlabs Super Chats. We got a nice super sticker from uh, at Pythagoras. So thank you, Pythagoras. Appreciate that. Ronaldo McWhinney, uh, McWhiskey, sorry. I can see you, Ronaldo. He says, I don't think we have any inflammatory headlines this week. I just want to send support for all the wild speculation and hot takes. Cheers, Jets. Thank you, Ronaldo. Um, yeah, and uh, let's see, Travis. Sorry. What? Jerry Miller says it looks bad morally compared to Batgirl if WB canceled The Flash. Like, dude, we are in Hollywood. There is no such thing as morals. What are you talking about? It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Yeah, you cannot you cannot judge Hollywood through the normal prism of human beings. It just it doesn't even work like that. Not even not even a little bit. Unfortunately, it's absolutely about what's going to sell. What's going to make us money? What, what can we get away with? And what PR disaster can we survive if we make this decision? That's how, that's the, those are all the things that are factoring into this decision right now. And Jeff might be right that mom and pop in Wisconsin don't know who Kevin Feige is or Ezra Miller is. But I think he, misun I think he underestimates the brand recognition amongst the 18 to 34-year-olds across the world about who these people are and their interest in going to see the movie. Because mom and pop in Wisconsin aren't going to see the Flash movie three times. It's the, it's the 18 to 34 year olds who have access to the internet, who are into all this shit, who basically keep afloat the YouTube community because of their interests if in these God, franchises. If God so, forbid, if yeah. God forbid, knock on wood, right? The Kevin Feige got hit by a bus tomorrow and was killed. Do you think that the grosses of the MCU are going to go down? Possibly. Yes. That is a wild, wild theory. I'll tell you right now, because the first time the first time the post Feige movie comes out and it's terrible, what happens? People are going to be like, oh, shit, this is what we got now, post Feige. Oh, That's shit. Was Kevin Feige's made a lot of terrible movies, too, guys. Not I don't a know, lot. This guy, he's not like King Midas where everything he touches is gold. He's not made a lot of terrible movies. He's made a few in comparison. Come and, on. And I just like... I wish people, when talking about Ezra Miller, would realize that Ezra Miller is nothing, nothing compared to a 90s era Robert Downey Jr. What's true? That's nothing. Nice. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Uh, let me hit some <laughs> What? Say that again? People are just ridiculous. It's all because of Twitter, which, <laughs> again, is 6% of America. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people are on there. Um, all right. Uh, real quick, uh, let's hit some of these Streamlabs here. And there's 166 of you watching us right now already. Thank you so much. Please make sure you hit that like button. Uh, I pinned the Streamlabs address in the chat. So if you want to send some support, send in some questions, thoughts, and comments, do it now. Travis Earl saying, after unsealed court documents revealed damning evidence against Johnny Depp, MSNBC reported a social media swing in Amber Heard's favor. Does WB risk a PR nightmare if they remove her from Aquaman 2 because it will give the appearance of punishing her for speaking out? That's a good question. Jeff, thoughts? They're not removing Amber Heard from Aquaman 2. Where do people yeah. get this stuff from? It's just people have been people have been clamoring for it. Is, 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 when did this show become the response to the morons of the internet? <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, why do people have such dumb takes? Well, people are getting removed from the movie. All right. All right. Fair enough. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, no, I don't know. You know, these new unsealed documents, I, MS, MSNBC may have reported the swing. But remember, 
MSNBC is a very, very liberal bent. So you have to kind of factor that in when you're hearing the news from MSNBC side, NBC side of things. And don't forget, Rachel Maddow was uh, kissing Tucker Carlson's butt the other day in an interview. So just all these people take care of each other. Trust me on that. Nancy Mallory says, do you see WB releasing a statement about Ezra Miller or will they continue to be silent? I think that's a great question. They haven't said one word about any of these accusations and incidences, incidents involving Ezra Miller. Do you think they'll say something now? Has, has Ezra Miller, is he, is he in jail? Or are they no. in jail? No. Okay. If they did something that should put them in jail, don't you think that they would be in jail? Maybe. I, I just like. I don't know who their lawyers are. They haven't. They have like. <laughs> they haven't done anything that that bad. Okay. All right. In this thing. Put that on a shirt, somebody. Jeff. In, Jeff Snyder. In this Ezra theme Miller's of Hollywood it. behavior, they haven't done anything that would make a company walk away from a two hundred million dollar investment. That's fair. I am Two Fly Cam says greetings, fellas. I was curious if Game Time would re- would be returning along with football next month. Also, Jeff, please admit your Patriots. We'll finish last in your division this year, LOL. No, they won't. Yeah. No, they won't. The Jets are still know. in the division, right? Huh? The Jets are still in the uh, AFC East, so yeah. Yeah, I think the yeah. Jets. Yeah, I, I think we're okay. <laughs> and yes, I announced it on the show, and we should, or on my social media, we should announce it here. First of all, the Hot Mic is its own separate podcast feed now, ladies and gentlemen, for the next couple of weeks. It'll still show up on the Outlaw Nation Podcast Network, but going forward, after in September, it will be, it will be its own feed only. You'll only be able to find the hot mic stuff on the podcast feed. So wherever you download podcasts, go I, and I, subscribe to it now. Love this, Cam, Cam Solace. Our way to trivialize assaulting women, Jeff. Was was he was was Ezra Miller charged with assault? He was charged with assault. Yes, for throwing a chair at a woman uh, when he was there in Hawaii. Yes, Where at they the house. Convinced- were they no, because the trials are all still like kind of in motion. Everything's okay, still in motion. Then I guess they haven't assaulted anybody because in this country you're innocent until proven guilty. That's that's absolutely fair. That's absolutely fair. I just you um, know everyone everyone likes to pretend they know everything they do. You know it's like we don't. There are things that we don't know. It's okay to say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he they did choke that girl that woman out on video. We've seen that, but we don't know what the end result of that whole situation has been yet. So. And I wonder if WB paid people off. I wonder if that, you know, kind of, you know, it's bad publicity. Let's pay them off. We could pay them to go away. We saw Deshaun Watson settle with 25 out of 26 women who accused him of assault. So and got the settling biggest, stuff does happen. And got the biggest contract ever, right? Yeah, I got the biggest, which is ridiculous. But, but, uh, speaks volumes about I don't the, know the world works. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, all right, let's see this uh, other st- uh, super chat that came through here. Uh, Ken, uh, Keltrick Pickens says, I'm with Jeff. Movie fans have to remember, we are the hardcore. We aren't the general audience. Most people couldn't even name you who directed their favorite films if their lives were on the line. <sighs> yes. Maybe. Maybe. But I don't know if I agree because there are some the, – the, the people are going to see this movie – who are going to push movies into the billion dollar stratosphere are not the people who are going to see it once. It's the people who go see it multiple times. That will put, that's what pushes movies into the billion dollar stratosphere. So I think there's more people than you think who are aware of Hollywood, but it certainly isn't as much as we think there are, but I think there's more than you people think there isn't. That's, that's what I would say. Like movies in general, guys, are just so much smaller than look at the, like sports. If it well, I'll put I'll put it this way, if movies were as big as sports, John and I would be on ESPN right now. Okay, they're they're just yeah. people don't fucking care. People yeah. don't care. You think that they do because we're in this film Twitter bubble and all the tweets that we see are about movies and you know we're we've just immersed ourselves in them. But in general, I promise you, nobody fucking cares. All right, all right, fair. That's Jeff's point of view. Ben Rayner, uh, oh no, sorry, Cinemar says much love to the hot mic. Thank you, Cinemar. Best show on YouTube's. I appreciate that. Nothing beats Snyder dropping knowledge from the W Hotel ba- balcony, living that LA life. LOL. Are you at the Hotel W? Is that where you're at? Definitely not. Definitely not the W. 
Oh yeah, and as, as I, I just think that everyone's perception of everything is is just skewed, and it's skewed by social media. And no one's realistic anymore. We see, you know, we see things out of context. Okay. We think we know the whole story. We read an article, and because it's from the Hollywood Reporter, Deadline, or Variety, we take it for gospel. It's the yeah. same people. It's the same me, whoever. It's the same people. It, it, Having a, a, an outlet at the end of your name doesn't give you superpowers. Yeah, I agree with that. I, they lie to 100%. us all the same. Yeah. So I just... Yeah. They hire their buddies and they give us what they give us. It's a fair point. Use your brains. Think about it. Why, why would they just get rid of a $200 million movie that is supposed to be very good? I don't know. Ben Rayner says, right now I don't think the public knows Ezra. However, the longer this goes on and the worse it gets with them... I think people will start to clue in. And over the long term, uh, ideally, in my in my honest opinion, situation is for WB to release the movie now and move move on, then recast Flash after that. Yeah, is that a possibility, Jeff? Do they move the release of this thing up now to kind of just get it over with and then recast after that? What do you think? I, I don't think it's done. I mean, don't they need to... I mean, yeah, post-production? VFX in this town is totally backed up. That's why yeah. all these dates may move, whether it's Aquaman or Blue Beetle or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think all these dates are subject to moving. <clears throat> uh, again, people—it's it, like you uh, like we were talking about last week. Just because these people say something, yeah, doesn't make it fucking so. Like they can change their minds. Like how many times do we see release dates change? Like, yeah, yeah. it's true. We see it change all the time for sure. Uh, and I am Two Fly Cam. Oh, no, so Adam Jimenez says, Hey, guys, missed last week's episode because I was out watching Bullet Train, and honestly, I should have stayed and watched the show. Movie was a waste of time. I disagree with you. I like that movie. Hey, Roca, Liverpool off to a rough start, and Man City riding high. Keep it real, guys. Well, I mean, you know, when you have $950 million to spend on players, you should be expected to win. So we are the underdogs. You guys are the fat cats. So good, good job on winning on doing what you were supposed to do was to win with all that money you've play, paid out for those players. Also, uh, real quick to swing around, somebody asked about game time. I announced this yesterday as well. Game time will be coming back in September. It will not be on the Outlaw Nation. Game time will be its entire own YouTube channel. And uh, Winston, a. Mar Winston A. Marshall is definitely joining me for an NFL show, which we haven't named yet. But I will be trying to get people and hire hosts to talk about hockey, baseball, uh, the the uh, MLS uh, and World Soccer as well. And I might do my own Premier League show. We shall see. So sport, I'm going to try to get sports covered there uh, and, and find people who have small shows or small followings and give them a platform to deliver their stuff. So just look for that down the road here. Um, no, all right. Any, go ahead. John, don't you think like there's this element, again, and it's, and it's brought on by the internet. It's the same way that we pile on people who say the wrong thing. Yeah. Can't yeah. Belt and all this shit. <clears throat> don't you think people are just like, they want this movie to be dumped. Do you mean dumped? Why? Do you they why want, do you think they, they want the movie to be canceled because they want Ezra Miller to be canceled? Well, do you think they want it to be dumped maybe because they want to be right about this? Do you think that's an element of it as well? Right, right about what though? Like that uh, you should like yeah, you guys should have said made a statement by now. You haven't. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh you you're letting this you're letting this person keep being a part of and leading this film. Why haven't you stopped this? Uh, boom, we're canceling the movie. Great. That's right. You were supposed to cancel it. Damn right you canceled it. That's the right move. You know, and so feeling that sense of entitlement, that sense of rightness. It, yes, it's they, this yeah. moral superiority that everybody feels these days as if their mm. shit don't stink, as if they haven't made any mistakes themselves. Ezra yeah. Miller's still a young person, by the yeah. way. Um, I, I just... Not, not I'm, I'm, they're, they're, listen, their age does not excuse their behavior, and and clearly it's uncalled for and out of line. Yes, and they need to learn how to behave in a society. Yeah, uh, maybe if studios and 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 uh, um, uh, maybe yeah, maybe studios and executives didn't pamper their fucking asses, maybe they would learn to function in society. My patience that, level is so done with this. With Ezra and with Anne Hayes. Why do you need? Why do you need a patience level with him? Are you going to see the Flash when it comes out? I don't know yet, right now, to be honest oh, with you. I okay. don't know. Okay. I'm on the fence. I'm I'm not, I'm not allowed to be on the You're fence so on this. Full of shit. I don't know. I'm gonna feel in June, just like I don't know if, if Ezra's still gonna be part of the Flash movie in June. 
I am sitting here saying I've got some hesitation for the first time ever because why do I want to see a lame duck movie when David Zaslav is going to maybe reset the whole fucking thing and burn it to the ground? Why would I watch that? I didn't go see, I've yet to see X-Men Dark Phoenix. Never saw it. May never see it because it makes no, there's nothing it's connected to. Why would I waste two hours? Oh, it's it's not not because Michael Fassbender was accused of domestic abuse? No, it was because it's not connected to anything that's going to go forward. So if the Flash movie... If if so Zaslav you comes out and says need things to be connected, if you're gonna like it needs to connect to something, or else you're not gonna watch. Yes, you know what? They canceled the Wilds. I had it on my I had it on my queue. After they canceled it, I took it off my queue because I don't have to watch it anymore. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't watch things that are canceled ahead of time before I get to them. It makes no sense. It's a waste of time. You know why? Because I'm so busy watching so many things. I don't want to waste time doing that. Uh, Ronaldo McWhiskey says, so what do y'all think of the odds are that, that Mr. Miller gets a DUI or manslaughter charge for accidentally killing one of their friends? I know I shouldn't joke, so I'm asking you all and everyone in the chat with all sincerity. I don't think it's gotten to that point, um, but I, I imagine the assault situation could open the door for him doing this possibility. But then again, if you're aware of this person and the shit storm around them and you put yourself in harm's way by being in a car with this person as they're driving or being around this person as doing stuff, you're kind of asking to be part of this situation. And that is not a good thing. So you, you got to take responsibility for your, for your decisions in life and the consequences that come with them. So if you put yourself in this person's orbit and they hurt you, all I can tell you is you saw the red flags and you did it anyway. So the only person to blame is yourself. Yeah. Jeff. That's your thoughts? I, I, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Daniel Haygood says, we live in a society. Nice joke from the Joker. Also, we have four slots left in the Owl Nation Fantasy Football League, folks. It's a grand time. All right, maybe I should get Jeff involved in this. Sign me in. Sign, sign right. me in. Mike Joyce says, Jeff, you've teased us in the last two weeks. What are your thoughts on the masterpiece that is Marcel the Shell with shoes on? Yes, Jeff. <laughs> I, I liked Marcel the Shell, but I was expecting a different movie. Oh, like, I was expecting this movie where, like, the Shell goes out and, like, meets the world on this journey for his family. And that is not what the movie is. The movie is just set, like, in a house with this white, fil- boring white filmmaker who's, like, talking to him. It's very cloying. I didn't really have this emotional response that a lot of people had. And I'm a pretty emotionally responsive guy. I cried almost everything. True. It just felt like this cutesy kind of kids movie um, without like a real antagonist or anything. And I give it like a B minus. Yeah, I liked it, but eh. at least a B, at least. I don't get why people are like, you know, saying this is like the most amazing movie. And I, I was crying and oh, it's so emo- like no, nah, I didn't get that. Okay. You're more, you're also more cynical than most people, so I think the balance there of your emotion and cynicism sometimes you never know which one you're going to get depending on the day. Uh, I, I'm too. Hey, what SBH did RDJ abuse women and groom children? Ezra is accused of both. What the fuck is Jeff talking about? Pretending like he only stole liquor? So disingenuous. RDG was mostly self-destructive. I mean, so self-destructive if you consider driving around Los Angeles high and drunk and putting yeah. everyone in danger. I mean, guys, did, did, like Ezra's accused of grooming children. Did he yeah. sleep with the children that he's accused of grooming? Or was it just like, I've known this person since they were 12 and now they're 18 and now they're under my influence or spell and so I've groomed them? I, I mean, don't know. I don't know. We don't know the particulars. Like, Fully. Listen, gr- grooming is such a charged word, word these days. You had all the Fukunaga allegations about grooming, but these yeah. people were over 18. But there's such a thing as adult grooming. But like you said, at what point do you have to take a start taking responsibility for your own behavior? Yeah. So it's just like some of this stuff, guys, are like, oh, we see the word grooming and we think, oh, this man must be evil. But it's like, what is this really? What is it? I don't know, Jeff. It, uh, well, I mean, I, I have my own pro. Well, I have my personal opinions on it, just as other people are, and you you as well are allowed to have your own subjective opinions on what you consider to be grooming or not. There's a definition for it, but that doesn't mean necessarily that's your definition for it. So uh, certainly right. it's up for debate and discussion. 
Um, let's keep going. I'm two fly camps as the Jets a defense and above average quarterback, but I digress. When will we see a Green Lantern or Martian Manhunter film from WB? Also, where the hell is the Batman 2 confirmation or film date? What's the holdup? Put um, that on screen so I can read that because it's too long a question. But before I answer it. I can't put SB, these on screen. Yeah. I'm going back to SBH. I like how Jeff's trying to sweep under the fact that Ezra has been accused of abuse. Listen, I don't give a shit about Ezra Miller or the accusations uh, against them. I care about the movie that he's in and what its fate is and how all of this shit doesn't really matter. Okay. That's, I don't, I'm not a fucking crime reporter here. I don't care. Okay. So yeah, what was the other question? Uh, two, two fly cam was bragging about is the Jets defense and the above average, average QB, which is completely wrong. When will we see a Green Lantern, a Martian, Manhunter film from WB? Also, where the hell is the Batman 2 confirmation or film date? Or what's the holdup? Well, they haven't even There's finished no writing Bat. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. You tell There's yeah. no holdup because people don't understand what the word green light means. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have to wait for the script to come in. Yeah. So you can see how much it's going to cost, you know, and then you go off and green light it. Like, I, I just don't know. Like, he's writing it. It doesn't mean, yeah. oh, it hasn't been green light yet. They may not make it. Like, what? Yeah. People, what? It's going to be a while till we see any announcement for Batman 2. Matt Reeves wants to take his time. And, and the thing is, it's still making money. So it, there's no rush to put out the sequel. In fact, I'm glad that they're taking their time to figure out what they want to do next with this whole situation. And why would you write a film right now with the stuff that's in flux at WDCW? So just take your time, write the film you want to start beginning the process, and then eventually there'll be an announcement for that. Uh, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, you're gonna you're not gonna see that for a very long time, to be honest with you. And the Green Lantern Core series is still going forward on HBO Max for now, but I, I I don't know how that's gonna connect up to a Green Lantern film down the road. But let's get Superman first. I don't think anything works until you put a Superman ten pole in the ground. Then you go from there, right? Yes. Yeah, so people are talking yeah. about fucking Martian Manhunter movies. How about we get yeah. Superman right first? Like, what yeah. is going on? What are these people thinking? Yeah. Um, I, you know, Zeno Hour in the chat says they confirm the Batman to at CinemaCon. What does con confirm even mean? No, they right? confirm they're going to do it. They haven't confirmed that it's going to have a release date or when that's going to be. But if it hasn't it's been confirmed. greenlit yet, then what has been confirmed? Like, development? Like, I just... Yeah. Again, these words, they've lost all meaning these days. They've just lost all meaning, and I'm, I'm so fed up. Um, yeah, all right, wait, Alex, Jeff, did I get any boob-related backlash based on my recent comments? What what what, what backlash could there be? You know what? Girl, you stop reading asked. the comments when the people weren't paying any money? How that's about you right. stop doing that? That's right. John's hosting the show. Yeah, that's right. Dan, Brian Brawler says, Daniel Haygood, hmm, I wouldn't say underrated. It's perfectly rated. I've seen it, and he's talking about Daniel Haygood's comment that Underrated film that X Men Dark Phoenix is, which is completely wrong. It's a terrible film, from what I understand. Terrible. So. And it's an irrelevant film more than anything else. Um, real quick. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So let's move on to this uh, uh, super uh, stream lab that'll launch us into our next topic here. With Heat 2, the prequel is recasting or de aging the way to go. Why? Who would you cast? Gosling as a young Pacino, maybe, and Colin Farrell as De Niro. I'm late. So if you already covered this, please forgive me. Just wanted to support. No, thank you for more. You're launching us into this next topic because we got to get out of the world of DC. You spent half 40 minutes in there. So Heat 2, Michael Mann, the book is out. Heat is out in 4K now, a new uh, um, 4K restoration or 4K, whatever you want to do, version of it. So Heat 2, you've read it. Prequel, sequel. Do you, And Michael Mann tweeted that Heat 2 is coming. Is he really going to do this? And if he is, who do you think is going to be cast in this world, in these roles? I hope that he doesn't do it. Yeah. It probably will happen because it's an inevitability. Um, yeah. Not that Heat was some like monetary juggernaut either. It's just really held up, you know, over the years on home. Yeah, video. no, it wasn't good when it, it wasn't like a big box office hit when it came out. You're right about that. No, yeah. I don't even, it wasn't even nominated for an Oscar. Like, imagine that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be nominated for like 15 Oscars. Maybe. Uh, who do I think would I, I feel like you know they probably would go after someone like Hemsworth uh, for Chris Shaherlis they're both Lati Italian why the fuck would you go after lily white blonde haired guys I'm talking about the leads I'm talking about Chris Shaherlis he's the oh, okay. Chris Shaherlis is like oh, you mean as a, as a the Val Kilmer character yeah he's like basically the lead in the book okay oh he is wow okay 
Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Hannah, and I'll, but mostly Chris, right? Because he's yeah. gone. Well, I didn't um, get sent a copy by Jeff Snyder, so I don't know what happens in the book. But go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So I, I think I can just, you know, I can see Chris Hemsworth pretty easily stepping in for, for He'd have Val. to slim down, though, wouldn't he? Because I mean, he's fucking yeah. massive. Yes, and no, I don't think that he could be this hulking dude. I think you're right. He would have to slim yeah. down. Yeah. But he also has the relationship with Michael Mann from Black Hat. Yeah, true. Very true. But not one of Michael Mann's best movies, though. No, but not Chris Hemsworth's fault. Right. I, I, I can blame Chris Hemsworth for a lot of things, but not that movie. So maybe Michael Mann's like, all right, Chris, I, you know, I cast you in a real sh shit movie. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I'll throw you a real part. What about uh, Natalie Portman? Does she come back? Does she have a part in the in the uh, in the book? She she is in the book, but okay. no, she she not not the right age. Um, okay. okay. Uh, I mean, God, you, are we really going to go with Chalamet? For no. Like, who, who would it be? Like you would have Neil, you'd have Vincent as young men, and then who is it? Neil or Vin, or uh, uh, is Vincent? Alive in the in the in the sequel in the book? Yes. Uh, okay. You know, maybe I heard Ta you know Tapley. I think suggested Adrian Brody. Yeah, <laughs> I don't no. see it. What about Alex Wolf? Alex Wolf is a young Pacino. Would be interesting, don't you think? No. <laughs> 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 that's why i don't think it's like i don't know that you can necessarily do this yeah. um, someone mentioned kilmer's child these kilmer's are son these are listen as far as i'm concerned these are the two greatest actors who ever walked the fuck agreed country. agreed and like how do you fill these shoes yeah yeah it's tough to fill the shoes I mean, it's tough um you know there is a great villain uh oh, in cool. the book. you know there's there's a really good villain um okay you know, there's there's a latina love interest there, there's really two Latina leads. Okay, like uh, uh, you know, so like, who would you, who would you cast um, for what? Let's say thirty to thirty-five, and then for... twenty to twenty-five. I mean, Isaac Gonzalez is a possibility if you look at Latinas. She's yeah. been in Baby. She's been a Baby Driver and a couple other, you know, Godzilla versus. She wasn't great Godzilla versus Kong, but that's a terrible be... movie. But she's a good actress. Would this be for the 20 to 25 year old or the 30 to 35 year old? I think 30 to 35. She's in that range now. Is she maternal enough? I don't know. I've never seen her do anything maternal, but she doesn't mean she doesn't have that gear. Right. So I don't know. As opposed to, and with the, the other round, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities now when you're looking around at, uh, at Latina actresses. So I don't know. 20 to 25. I'd have to spend some time with it and I'd have to read the book. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Leslie yeah, yeah, Grace. Yeah, yeah, the book. And I and I would definitely recommend the book. Is the book the greatest? No. Um, is that a possibility? Is Anna yeah. Armas a possibility? Yeah, that, that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, yeah. yeah, I think she could play Neil's love interest. Oh, a nice suggestion. Micah says, "How about the guy who played Pacino in The Offer on Paramount Plus?" Uh, the guy. Who put, oh, uh, yeah. I thought he was good. Ippolito, Anthony Ippolito. I think. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I don't. I don't think it's okay. as easy as that. Um, it's not. You know, who's the other guy who who could play Young Pacino? Like John Magaro. Oh, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, John Magaro or whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But anyways, the, the book actually starts out a little rough because okay. it sort of goes back over the events of Heat. And right. It didn't. I didn't love the you know the beginning of the book, but it you know it takes some time to find its own identity. And okay. to tell its own story, and I think it does get better as as it goes on. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'd, I'd be like more curious, like who would play like John Voight's character? Oh, because he's in it. Is it as a in the as a prequel or sequel? Is he in both? Um, both sections of the book, I mean. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want to give too much away, but okay. yeah, like, right, he's right. in it, and then Ted uh, Tom Noonan's character, Kelso, the one in the wheelchair, who's yeah, just like, yeah. These bits of information floating in the air. He plays an important role as well. The man, the manhunt, the original manhunter. I love that guy. Yeah, Jen Ortega would be a good one. That's uh, good. Actor. Oh, Jay Hernandez. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Oh, Oscar Isaac. Ooh. Jay Hernandez. <laughs> for who? For, for for Pacino. No, no. Jay played Carlito, but he played him as a Latino. You know, no, no. But uh, Oscar Isaac eh, could be interesting, depending on where you want to go. That yeah, I can see that. Get, you know, listen, give it a read. I, you know, I totally, 
I'm totally going to get it right. I didn't get a cent of coffee. Um, uh, all right, let's move on here. Uh, Jamal, Jamal Baylor says, support. What straight-to-streaming movies are you excited to see the rest of this year? Yeah, Jeff, let's uh, let's talk about um, the stuff that's out now. Let's talk about some of these films that are out now. Uh, anything you recommend? They, them, fall. Uh, what's the other one that you... I would you actually re- recommend them both. Fall okay. is, you know, is the kind of movie that made my palm sweat watching it. Okay. And I watch it on my laptop, uh, not even on a big screen TV. So, yeah. you know, are the girls a little annoying? Yeah. Is the movie probably 15 minutes too long? Yeah. Yeah. But I thought there were some pretty cool sequences. Like, okay. Did you ever see the Aeronauts, John? Uh, the uh, the balloon one? I yeah. did see that one. Yeah, I like um, uh, Felicity Jones. So I, I did watch that one. I just thought that it had some great like photography yes. uh, and, and, and stuff. And, you know, th- this isn't this doesn't have nearly the budget or anything. I think this movie costs like $3 million. But, yeah. you know, for, for what it is, you know, it's a guilty pleasure. Okay. They, them, I also enjoyed, even though I understand the distance. No one liked that film, but you liked it. All right, go ahead. Dude, I mean, there is some fucked up shit in this movie. Yeah. Like, it, but like, it, it, to me, it's like twisted and evil. And I can, but I, I see why, other, you know, people are like, how could you put this movie out right now? It's so irresponsible. But like, that, it, it's pushing buttons. And like, yeah. that's what a fucking genre movie is supposed to do. Yeah. And this movie right. is pushing the buttons. Like, uh, did you did you see it? Are you going to watch it? Uh, uh, we we saw the trailer, and surprisingly, my girlfriend was somewhat interested in seeing it. So we may watch it over the weekend here on Peacock. So we, I will let you know. I mean, if I was, you know, if I was struggling with my sexuality or, or, or stuff like yeah. that, maybe I'd be a little reluctant to watch it because if you have maybe negative thoughts, oh, maybe elements of it that like reinforce those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, clearly these are, you know, bad people. Um, so I don't think it like the who is bad and who is good gets lost in translation. Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, what about Resurrection? Have you seen that? Rebecca Hall and Tim Roth? There's also some fucked up stuff with a dog in that, in that movie. They then, uh, okay. Yes, Resurrection. I mean, that's way more fucked up. <laughs> but is it well, good? Yes, I, okay. I enjoyed it as well. I want to see that. Definitely a head scratcher. Definitely one you're gonna like. Be like, wait, what? And you'll immediately go to Google. Um, but very well done. Two great performances from okay. Rebecca and Tim Roth. Day shift. Have you seen that one? The Jamie Foxx one's coming out tomorrow. I heard it's really good. I've okay. heard it's a lot of fun. Okay. And I think a big part of that is the fact that it's rated all her. Yeah. Emily the criminal. Emily the criminal. I need to finish my review for LA Mag tonight. Um, but it's it's very good. Okay. I haven't seen it since Sunday, so I'm like trying to write this review off of memory. Uh, it's it's been a while, but it, it was worst. like one of the top ten movies I've seen this year. Like wow. it's a, very, a very strong debut from John Patton Ford, and she's amazing in it. Okay, all right, fair enough. Ethan Cohen has a film coming out. What can you tell us about it, Jeff? This is the one with uh, Geraldine. Yeah, Joey Margaret Qualley and Geraldine Viswanathan. Yeah, those are two to me of like the best up and coming actresses right now. Wow. There's no plot details. Uh, I'm not surprised yeah. Ethan's going in alone after you know Joel went it alone with Macbeth and whatnot. Um, yeah. But are yeah. they breaking up, or is this just a matter of like you know stretching I their wings so. a little? I bet you they get back together again. I think <laughs> if they probably want to pursue their own solo things, you know, for now, yeah. see what it's like to. to go that route but yeah. i do i do not think that we've heard the last of the cohen brothers as a okay. like, group no uh, i i bet you that they direct again but um quali i think is good she's talented this one i think is great okay I, I really believe in her did you like the maid i didn't see the maid was the maid good i watched maid i mean it's okay. not not for me okay all right um don john says he too movie not happening he's just hyping up the book eh, maybe but kind of feel that way. That's what people do. That's what people do. Welcome to Hollywood. I think it would be more of a series than a movie. Ooh, that could be interesting. Because when you have De Niro and Pacino and the first time that they're on screen together in a movie, that, that's an epic, you know, that, that denotes a three-hour running time. Yeah. You can't make this heat two in two hours. Is, is it a three-hour movie? No, I, I don't yeah. think so. Make it just do it as a show. All right, uh, real quick, because I know we got like a 10 minutes, so let's hit some of these. Sylvester Stallone just signed with the CAA, back with CAA. 
in the midst of all this drama with uh, with the Rocky stuff and with uh, uh, Samaritan about to come out on Prime Video, what do you take away from him si- re-signing back with CA? Do you think they're going to launch the fight here to help Stallone get a little more ownership of Rocky? I don't really see how Stallone has any legal st- leg to stand on. Well, uh, it's funny you say that because Hollywood Reporter released an article with legal scholars that they asked about whether Stallone might have some standing here. I think you all should read it if you, if you guys haven't read it. But go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. It's one well, I guess I, I actually I saw the article you're talking about. I did not mm-hmm. read it yet. Okay. But I guess if there are laws that, that give the creators back the rights to things that are 35 years old or longer, which is how, like, the, you know, the the – what was it? I think Friday the 13th creators and like yeah. a couple of these, you know, these kinds of things. I guess if that's law it pertains to Sly and everything like, yeah, well, then, yeah, if he's the writer, then why wouldn't he get the rights back? But yeah. I, I don't know if that's, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I need to read the fucking article. <laughs> that, that's basically what that comes down to. Maybe read the article. <laughs> Let me ask you real quick about this. Fran Drescher, the nanny who is the SAG after president, kind of blows my mind. She's saying that Hollywood's COVID vaccination mandate, quote, walks the razor's edge of compromising religious disability and body sovereignty freedoms. So what do you take? That sounds a little red state in my mind. What do you take from this? Is this her trying to make sure actors get back to work and maybe pushing the Republican point of view on this saying, Hey, you know what? No more vaccine mandates. No more mask mandates. What do you think yeah, she said? I, I, I think all that shit is going to get relaxed and you know pretty okay. much go away, and it's going to just be like accepted. Like, hey, you know, we we live with COVID now. We're not going to go to all these great lengths to to, to do shit for it. Um, oh, I had a I had a good point, and I fucking lost it. Uh, well, there was. Right, meeting- I know what it was. Wait, I know what it was. Okay. And and when I saw it with my own eyes. It was like disturbing, but it just goes to show, guys. All these actors yeah. are working on fake vaccination cards. <laughs> like, believe me when I tell you, there, there's a lot of them. Yes, I would say again, and in, in the estimate I think was higher than this, but fifty percent of the actors in this town are working on a fake vaccination card. And if you're an actor and your agent or manager has not offered you a fake vaccination card. You need better representation. <laughs> Again, just like everything else in this town, it all starts with the reps. The yeah. agents and the managers, believe me, you don't think that they have fucking PDFs of the, and, and the right paper stock that yeah. they can print out. Oh my God, they have it all. I've seen Or, it. you know, get fucking vaccinated. Look, I've been, I've been vaccinated and boosted three times. I have five vaccinations in my body. Two and a half years, I haven't gotten COVID. I've been to five cons this year, okay? Five. And I've survived them wearing my mask, being vaccinated. So quit crying. Nothing's going to happen to your body. Put this shit in your fucking body and be healthy. Everybody should get vaccinated. Yes. But, you know, does getting a vaccination prevent you from getting COVID? No. You're just lucky. You just have an incredible immune system. Now, look at your you genes. Right. You look like a 30-year-old man. You're goddamn right. I'm going to get there. Suck says, any news on the Sa- on the new Safety Brothers stuff? Are- and are you excited for the new Noah bomb back? No news on the new Safety Brothers, although there are EPs on this movie that I watched a trailer for today called Funny Pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Yes, yes. I had never heard of this movie before today, and then a rep at Cinetic sent it over. Um, it looked interesting. It looked like an old, like, Andrew uh, Pajowski, whatever uh, movie, Pajowski. Yeah, it looks uh, like some of the 90s. It looks like some of the 90s. I agree with you. Yeah, uh, but no, I haven't heard anything about what the Safties are up to or the status of their TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, and as for the new Noah Bombach, no, not particularly <laughs> interested. I mean, Dom, Dom DeLillo or whatever, yeah. not yeah, not really interested. Driver and Greta Gerwig, I, I like them both, but uh, this is not a movie that I'm like, Give me if you give me 10 tickets at, at the fall festivals, is that going to be one of them? No. Yeah. Uh, look, I like Greta Gerwig behind the camera. I think she's the most boring actress ever, but I like her as a director. So uh, I did. I hated Mumblecore. All those Mumblecore films, bury them in the fucking ocean. I hate those Mumblecore films. JMB J- says, Jeff had two cups of coffee today. Spicy. Also, <laughs> really looking forward to Roka's new sports shows. As always, thanks, guys. Yeah, Jeff's spicy today for sure. I don't um, drink coffee, actually. But while while we're bitching about things that we can't stand, 
Okay. Why do why you haven't done this the whole show? All right, why does ahead. every tweet in my feed have to be movie X was released on this day five years ago? Don't come this after is, Rex chat. This is half the fucking tweets in my feed. Movie X came out three years ago on this day. Who cares? Let me explain to you how social media works, pal. You put stuff up there that a lot of people are going to like or comment on to keep your traction up, and that means you'll keep who getting is, highlighted who, who by, is, the, by the algorithm. Stuff? Who is sitting there looking at the calendar being like, today is August 11th. What movies came out on August 11th? Let's see. Oh, oh my God. God. People movie's seventh that birthday. Yeah. Like, it's I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to kind of uh, throw out there? Or are you good? Hold on. I got Why no. do people keep hiring Alec Baldwin? Why? Well, I mean, hire away. But if you're a journalist, at least mention it in, in the yeah. story. What at least that mention about? it. I saw you tweet about that. Do you think that's what happens? That the publicist, okay, you can talk about this, but don't mention Rust then you can run with the story. Who the hell was going to click on a Alec Baldwin deadline story if just because they didn't mention Russ? That doesn't make any that sense. That is 100% how it goes. Oh, um, it's ridiculous. And it's like, I, I, you know, someone said in, in my replies, does, does that need to be mentioned in every story about Alec yes! Baldwin? Yes! You know, end of time? No, I don't think that it does. But like, I do. In the first year of, of him coming back to projects? Yeah, I think you mentioned it. I think the investigation. Yeah, the, the investigation's not even over, so it's still fucking current to mention it. You know, um, I you know I love these kinds of things. Like Hulu says, Prey is its biggest movie or TV series ever. Yeah, wait, how'd it do? How many people watched it? Can't say. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'd like to like, see. I, I get that you don't like. I, it's yeah. like they don't trust the consumer enough to know you don't have as many subscribers as Netflix or Disney Plus. We understand that. Let's right. say you only have 50 or 100 million compared to their 200 million. I'm not going to sit here and like make fun of you about it. Just tell me how many people fucking watch the movie. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's a good point. Like, just give up the numbers. By the way, there's 226 year old watching right now. Please hit that like button. If you're watching it later, leave a comment. This is so great. We're getting great numbers here watching us live. So thank you very much. Um, uh, what else was I looking at? Spectrum Originals is done doing original content, uh, Jeff. Uh, are, we, are we happy about this? No yes. more female who, bad boys. Who was watching Spectrum Originals? I mean, even when they had something interesting, I think that they did. They had um, the second season of Manhunt. Yes. I Which, was that the Richard Jewell one or was that yeah. another? Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. And that was good. Yeah, but it was like, good. You know, I got that because I got screeners. Right. I would have no idea how to watch that otherwise. Uh, so you didn't I watch the uh, – Just for Spectrum, you know, subscribers or whatever. But I am a Spectrum subscriber now. And I still would have no idea how to watch that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, LA's Finest, which was the female bad boys with Gabriel Union and Jessica Alba. Uh, and then um, they had the Mad About You remake, a reboot, which was so painful to watch. So Ooh, it's like stick, stick to, Why can't people stick to what they're good at? Like everyone has to diversify nowadays. We have singers who are now actors and yeah. cable companies who now have to create content. Like, no, your job is to distribute the content that other experts make. Yeah, they said it's going to be a gradual process. There are still several shows in the pipeline. Lena Headey and Steve, Stephen James, they have a sci-fi thrill coming. Also, the George and Tammy uh, miniseries, which has Jessica Chastain as Tammy Wynette and Michael Shannon as George Jones. Uh, but that is also going to run on Paramount+. Plus. So at least that one's going to stay alive to a degree um, here. So I'm curious to see that one. There's the Jeff Nichols movie, uh, The yeah. Bike Riders, right, with Tom Hardy and yep. uh, Austin Butler. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sean Bean. Sean Bean and the intimacy. Oh, yeah, stuff. let's talk about that show. Yeah, it's on the. Sorry, that's on the list. Sean Bean had some comments claiming that he didn't see the need for intimacy coordinators. In essence, uh, because he likes the ability for the actors to have impromptu moments in when they're like caught up in love scenes or whatever, and even even said uh, that the actress he worked with recently, who was a Broadway musical theater actress. She was open to exploring and having a little more fun with it. But even she came out and said uh, uh, that uh, Sean is wrong about this. Rachel Zegler came out and said she, uh, Sean was wrong about this. A number of people came out and said intimacy coordinators, including Emma Thompson, a contemporary of Sean Bean's, came out and said intimacy coordinators are so essential uh, and are definitely necessary. I tweeted out that old white men should not be telling people 
that we don't need progressive things on set to make women feel comfortable to be a part of a process. I get where Sean Bean was coming from is he wants the uh, moment to moment life, the spontaneity within a love scene. But Jeff, this is a fucking shoot. It's not real life. Uh, and no one's watching a love scene. Going, wow. He really grabbed her ass there. Well, I, that, I, just <laughs> yeah, know I agree. Like, right. The, you know, everyone thinks that I have horrible opinions uh, when it comes to this stuff, but it's like, no, Sean Bean, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. Like the fucking intimacy coordinator is probably not there for you, but yeah. I, I get that they can't come out and say that the intimacy coordinator is just there for women uh, because we're all equal. But yeah, that is who the intimacy coordinators are there for. Yeah. Uh, women who don't want to have to be forced to shoot sex scenes or love scenes, whatever it is, with men who are twice their age, which is usually how it goes in this industry, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, I agree with Sean Bean in the sense that, like, we don't need do you to rule. Do you agree I, or do you see where he's coming from? I'm trying to keep you out of trouble. Do you agree or do you see where he's coming? I see where he's coming from in the sense that nothing, and it doesn't need to be a hard and fast rule. If you have two mm-hmm. actors who are comfortable with each other, what do you need an intimacy coordinator there for? Right? Yeah, um, it's about a comfort level. So it's like, Listen, some some people you're you're meeting the actor that you're sharing a love scene with th- that morning, that day, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then, then you then you want the intimacy award, but it's like, you know, if, if it's Emma Thompson and I, I, I don't even know who's like the guy f- who was in the film with her uh, recently on Hulu. Oh, that no, that's a young. No, I'm, I'm talking about if it's a contemporary, if it's someone who you've okay. been acting with for thirty years. Oh, I see. What do you need saying. an intimacy coordinator for? You know, yeah, like, like Edie Falco. Like, say you were going to shoot a, a, a sex scene with Edie Falco and James Gandolfini on The Sopranos. Yeah. Maybe you, there's not. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't need an intimacy coordinator for that. That's exactly what I'm saying. So I, yeah. he has, he, I see where he's coming from, right. but it came out all wrong. Yeah, it did. He said, he said, because uh, someone was asking the context, he was asked about intimacy coordinators and he said, they spoil the spontaneity of shooting a sex scene. It would inhibit me more because it's drawing attention to things. Somebody saying, do this, put your hands there while you touch his thing. I think the natural way lovers behave would be ruined by someone bringing it down to a technical exercise. Um, uh, and he said, Lady Chatterley, which he did in 1993 with Jolie Richardson, was spontaneous. It was a joy. We had good chemistry. But you don't, and I was married, she was married, and blah, blah, blah. But you don't know. That's and lucky, yeah. Of, yeah. What, what if you had bad chemistry? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't know what the situation is, or you want to avoid that if they're in. Plus, you want the woman to feel comfortable, and maybe she'll be more spontaneous knowing that she's in a safe environment with an intimacy coordinator. So that's another part of this that I think Sean didn't fully think out, although yeah, I respect him greatly as an actor. Don't, don't make the performance yeah. worse. I mean, right. a good actor will overcome if that's even something to overcome. Yeah, plus it's all fake. It's all fake! Anyway, all right, anything more you want to bring up here before we wrap up? No, I think I'm good to get out of here. Okay, let's get on out of here. Thank you all so much for joining us on another episode of Hot Mike, so many of you had 200 and well over 200 people joining us here. So we appreciate it madly. As we wrap it up, please hit that like button again. Don't forget, the Hot Mike is its own podcast feed. So go and subscribe to the, the, the uh, Hot Mike on its own podcast feed everywhere you download podcasts, including Apple, Google Podcasts. I think it's on Amazon Prime now. We're going, we're through iHeartRadio. We're on iHeartRadio through Spreaker. So go and download, uh, or go and subscribe rather. There, you can still have it on the Outlaw Nation Podcast Network for the next few weeks, but then in September, it is going on its own so that we can, you know, kind of quantify how the show is doing. So please remember, and plus we'll do more episodes with Jeff's time permitting, maybe some Q&As, maybe some breaking news, so you'll get access to that podcast-only episodes that we do there on the feed. So that's another reason to subscribe for sure. Jeff, another fun show. Uh, Please let everybody know where they can find you and read all the stuff that you're working on. Uh, at the Insider, BTL News, TheAngler.com, LAMag.com. Yeah. There you go. There you go. As for me, at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, The Outlaw Nation on Twitch. Subscribe to the channel down below. Get me to 25,000 subscribers. Let's go, people. Subscribe and hit that bell button so you see we're dropping all the content. Uh, and then what else? Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, my other podcast, the Top 10, the Cinephiles, and the Geek Buddies all out there for you to enjoy. All right, for Jeff Snyder, I'm John Roca. This has been The Hot Mic. We'll talk to you next time with another brand new live episode next week. Take care and have a great weekend, everybody.